Hey guys, Blazin here. Today, I'm going to unleash my wrath upon Halo Infinite. I'm going to go in depth on my problems with the game and why I don't enjoy it as much compared to MCC. I assume this is going to be a long video, so get comfortable. I'm not holding back this video. I'm about to take a massive shit on this game. So without further ado, let's do this. First, let's talk about Halo Infinite's movement and what are my issues with it. No, it has nothing to do with sprint, slide, or clamber. It actually has to do with the base movement itself. What's the problem with it, you may ask? The movement acceleration is way too fast. Why is this a problem? Because this actually requires less strategy and thought put into your strafe. Essentially, becoming a hard target can be achieved relatively easily. Especially in Halo Infinite, you can now adjust your movement threshold in the settings, which I don't think is a good thing. I also want to add that since your movement acceleration is so fast, I believe this plays into why jumping in the middle of your strafe in this game is actually detrimental to you, because when you jump, you lose all your speed near instantaneously, and you're floating in the air becoming an easier target. Not saying don't jump at all, but definitely jumping in this game is, is uh, less effective because grounded movement acceleration is overpowered. Professional players will tell you this as well. They will tell you to stay near cover and peak shoot because again, your movement acceleration is so fast that pros have been abusing it for a while now. I have to say it again, the best advice I can give you is learn to crouch strafe. Stop jumping in one-on-one -on -one fights, stop jumping non-stop, whatever it needs to be. When you're in a one-on-one -on -one and you're going to take a battle, I absolutely promise you that the more you crouch, the more 1v1s you're going to win. Now the one thing I need to say with jumping and one-on-ones and jumping in general is you still have to do it. Like, you know, towards a uh, key door, sorry. You still have to jump over to fight, but then when you're in this fight, you'll be crouch chafing compared to kind of the old H3 reach method, which was kind of, it was really just kind of jump. It was jumping was, jumping was key, you know? On top of all this, and yeah, I know, I'm not fucking done yet. Usually in past games, you'd want to get height advantage on your opponent. That's still true in Halo Infinite, however, when it comes to certain gunfights depending on the circumstance, usually, I jump on a ledge or a box and jump again to gain height advantage. Not in this game. In this game, I jump on a box or a ledge only to drop back down to the floor and repeat the process. Why? Because for some reason, the downward momentum in this game is pretty fast. I wonder if this could be a factor as to why curb slides are a thing in this game. Just think about that. I win more gunfights than not abusing Halo Infinite's downward momentum speed when in past Halo games you'd want to get any little height advantage you can get on your opponent. That's fucking backwards. This could be used to trick your opponent, sure, but ultimately you want that height advantage more often than not. And that's pretty much my rant on Halo Infinite's movement acceleration. The problem is that it's way too fast. I'll leave a link down in the description to Critical Infinite's video on this topic that you can check out if you think I'm talking out of my ass. I'm not fucking done yet though, because we can't talk about Halo Infinite's movement without talking about Halo Infinite's aim on how it feels in the game and settings you have access to. So what's the problem with Halo Infinite's aim? It feels inconsistent. Now this, I... I can't fucking explain to you why aiming can feel inconsistent to some people on a weekly to even a daily basis. Even some pros change their settings here and there, because even they feel the game being inconsistent when it comes to their aim. A couple of things that are a proven fact is that, in Halo 5, aiming felt too fast by the general community. And now in Halo Infinite, aiming is generally on the slower end. And on top of that, vertical aim is actually slower than your horizontal aim. So a little tip if you haven't done this already, set your horizontal aim to whatever you want, and your vertical aim at least one number higher. I feel like if you play this game on a daily basis, you're pretty much used to the shitty way this game feels in terms of movement and aim. But if you're someone like me that pretty much plays on a monthly or even a seasonal basis, I have to get used to the shitty way this game feels again, and my aim doesn't feel good again, so it's either I fucking adjust my sensitivity settings again, or adapt to the settings I currently have. Aiming just never feels good in this game. Now, like I said, it's hard for me to explain why this game has sensitivity issues both in the settings and in-game. All I can do is express is how, you know, how I feel and explain my experience. So, once again, I'm going to direct you to Critical Infinite's video on the topic of aim, sensitivity settings, and all that shit. 
He has a three-part series on it, and if you play Halo Infinite on a daily basis, I recommend you watch this video by Eternal Dahaka, as he goes in-depth on how the sensitivity settings work in Halo Infinite, and can better inform you on decisions on what you should adjust when it comes to your sensitivity settings, aim accelerations, dead zones, and thresholds. But wait! There's more! Now we move on to the last, and for those that follow me, probably my favorite part. Weapons. What beef do I have with Halo Infinite's weapons? They are either too easy to use, or can sometimes feel bad to aim and shoot with. Now, there are a lot of weapons I can say stuff on, good and bad, but we're going to focus on the main loadout weapons that came with the game. That being the Assault Rifle, Sidekick, Battle Rifle, and Commando. Starting with the Assault Rifle. Now, if you still don't think the Assault Rifle is overpowered in Halo Infinite, I think you're flat out retarded. But don't worry, that's why I'm here. Professor Blazin is going to help you open your third eye. Starting by showing you how the Assault Rifle performs in Halo Reach. Now, as you can see by pressing and holding the trigger, you can see the reticle blooms out and the weapon is at its maximum spread. Then, here's me tapping the trigger, and achieving a pretty consistent, very accurate two-round burst from the Assault Rifle in Halo Reach. And as you can see by doing this method, I'm able to get better consistent kills. See, in Halo Reach, the first two shots you fire are dead-on accurate in the center. But as soon as the third shot is fired, the weapon begins to spread, and by the fifth shot, the weapon is already at its maximum spread. So as you can see, the Assault Rifle, while being 10% weaker than Halo 3, there was a reason why Bungie made it 10% weaker. And that's because the way how Bloom works in Halo Reach gives the player a layer of skill to be accurate with the gun, unlike Halo 3's Assault Rifle. Control burst. Don't spray and pray. Now fast forward to Halo Infinite's Assault Rifle, what are we dealing with here? When it comes to body shots, it takes 20 shots to the body to kill. That's fair. That's not the problem. I also want to add that I do like the way it sounds, and I like its rate of fire. The problem is that this assault rifle has a headshot multiplier, and it takes 15 shots to the head for a kill. A 5 shot difference which is very significant considering this gun fires in fully automatic, and is one of the most accurate assault rifles in the series, and on top of that, has a 1.4 times zoom magnification to buff its range a bit. Now let's take a look at how Bloom works on this weapon, because holy fuck is it brain dead compared to Halo Reach. I swear to god, it feels like the first 9 shots of this assault rifle are pretty much dead on accurate before the weapon starts to actually spread. So when you start to think about implementing burst firing to your trigger finger, this is where the AR becomes busted. Burst firing is very abusable in this game, and on top of that, with a headshot multiplier and a 1.4 times zoom like I mentioned earlier, hopefully now you can see why this gun to this day is still overpowered to the point where picking up other loadout weapons is worthless when this is your starting weapon. There is little to no thought put into this AR's bloom, unlike Halo Reach where you actually have to sacrifice a bit of DPS to gain accuracy. In Halo Infinite, you can have both this AR. And because this gun is so strong, it hurts other weapons in the sandbox. Nope. I ain't done yet. I'm not done yet. Now let's move on to the sidekick. And if you still don't think the AR in Infinite is OP after what I just showed and explained, then I don't know what to fucking tell you, and you're just a fucking lost cause to me. 
Now, the sidekick is an inconsistent piece of shit. Where when you land shots, it feels so good. And when you miss shots, it feels so bad. This weapon has the exact same range as the assault rifle, which is very stupid. Why is 343 going back to Halo 3 in this case? Because if you don't know, Halo 3's AR and Magnum have the exact same red reticle range. Except, at least in Halo 3, the Magnum can shoot straight, while the sidekick in Halo Infinite has bloom. And unlike Halo Reach's Magnum, where that pistol does have bloom, but it is much more controllable in Halo Reach. Halo Infinite's sidekick is not as controllable, and I think that's partially due to not just Bloom, but also due to player's insane movement acceleration. See? Both movement and aim are connected to one another. And since the player has insane movement acceleration, like I already mentioned, eventually, you start to rely less on precision and controllability, and rely more on the RNG Bloom and hope to kill your opponent faster. Now, as I said in a past video, in BTB, Having it as your secondary in your starting loadout was a bad idea when BTB had sidekick starts. I don't think it has a place in BTB now, because you spawn with the assault rifle, and the bandit rifle is a gun you can rely on to shoot straight anyways. In social play, it is complicated. It's complicated because both the AR and sidekick fight each other back and forth. This wasn't really the case in past games. In past games, you use the AR for close encounters, and your pistol at mid to long range. In Infinite, both guns have bloom, but ironically, the AR is more reliable at long range than the sidekick, which is backwards as fuck. Social play in this game is not very fun, and that's partially due to skill-based matchmaking, but it's also due to the AR and sidekick being very shitty starting weapons. The AR and pistol dynamic in this game is royally fucked. You said it past me, it is fucking backwards. Past Halo games, even going as far back as CE, the philosophy was always AR at close range, pistol mid to long range. Only games that don't apply this are Halo 2 and Halo 4, because in Halo 2 the BR is overpowered and the Magnum is very weak, and in Halo 4 you can just make your own loadout. So yeah, the sidekick, while at times does take more skill than the AR, that skill is diminished due to the way Bloom is implemented on this gun, and its range is lacking. Sometimes it can feel like this gun gives you the headshot due to Bloom or you just don't hit jack shit. Let's move on to the BR. Now, the BR is also overpowered, but not in the same way the AR is overpowered. The BR is overpowered due to its scoped range in particular, and it's, at times, forgiving aim assist, bullet magnetism, etc. Whatever you want to call it. Nerfing its scope range would be an easy adjustment, but adjusting its reticle feel could prove to be a challenge because once you adjust reticle feel, as I'll call it, you have to keep in mind player movement speed as well. I mean, for those that played the flight test of this game years ago, remember how hard it was to aim? Now, I know the sensitivity settings and aim weren't perfect back then, but I do remember aiming feeling a lot harder, and to me, I thought 343 was heading in the right direction. I even praised them for it. Now, I also like that there's very little aim assist and very little shot magnetism. I've never had a feeling of my shots curving to my opponents, or if I... If I miss a shot, I'm gonna know that I missed a shot, and I really like that. So try and keep that, that's really good 343. See, my suggestion was don't touch the reticle stickiness, calm down the player movement acceleration, while still keeping the aiming difficult. 343 even said in one of their blog posts saying, they made a conscious effort to make aiming more difficult after the outrageous bullet magnetism and aim assist in Halo 5. But after the flights were over, Instead of 343 lowering player movement acceleration, they made aiming for certain guns easier instead. Even the sniper rifle and shock rifle. Now this section is actually pretty important, uh, I feel, so I'm actually going to quote them word for word here. So, quote, Aiming was probably the most highly debated topic we saw emerge during the flight. Since we're, fir since we're a first person shooter, it's not something we take lightly. And we mentioned and we monitored it closely on both weekends. Some liked how difficult the aiming was, but many players felt the aiming was too difficult and or felt bad. We also know that when the game is not fully optimized, which in, in this case it was a tech preview build, aiming does not feel as good as it would at launch. There were also some players who weren't happy with the removal of Red Reticle on PC. Overall, there's a lot of factors to unpack when it comes to this one. When we started work on Halo Infinite, we didn't want aiming to require more skill, but we also didn't want it to feel bad for anyone. 
there was a strong focus on raising the skill ceiling without removing the fun. Natural aiming feel that you'd expect from a Halo game. The response from this fight has made us take a closer look at aiming, but we needed to make sure we took a measured approach, especially knowing that the performance optimizations will also improve its feel in-game. As a result of this closer look, we've made minor changes to the cone angle of aim assist on select weapons for launch. To be clear, this has not changed the strength slash stickiness of the aim assist, but it should help make aiming feel more natural." End quote. So yeah, I've definitely heard split feedback when it comes to aiming. Some people said it's too easy, or bleh. Some people say it's too hard and some people like it. I'm personally on the side of I really like the difficulty. If anything, maybe 343 can decrease the movement acceleration between 5 or 10%. But that's about it. I do, I am more on the side of I, I do want to keep the difficulty of aiming in this game. I know I'm getting a little off topic, but I hope that you learned that both player movement and aim are connected, and affect the overall feel of Halo Infinite. All in all, the Bandit Rifle didn't need to be added to Halo Infinite. 343 just needed to adjust the Battle Rifle. But alas, 343, I swear to god, always chooses the more complicated route time and time again, and it hurts me to see because the obvious answers are in my fucking face. If anything, adding the bandit rifle complicated the tiers of other precision rifles, and I feel it put the commando in a weird spot where you're like, should you pick it up? Or no? Speaking of the commando, let's move on to that next, and this will be the last gun I'm going to talk about. Now, the Commando is a perfect example of what happens when you listen to literally everybody in the community without considering the stats of your own weapon that you created, 343. See, everybody agreed that the Commando needed to be buffed when the game came out. However, the competitive community never gave a solution to my knowledge. While the casual community at least pinpointed their issue, which was the gun was too hard to aim with. So what did 343 do? Naturally, they heard the feedback from the casual community and made the gun easier to aim with. But wait, hold on. There's a problem coming from the competitive community. What's the problem? Well, since 343 made the gun easier to use, 343 failed to consider the Commando's TTK is ridiculously fast. Much faster than the assault rifle and battle rifle. So what did 343 do next to respond to the competitive community's negative feedback? They nerfed the damage. And this is where the Commando is at today. A boring, watered-down precision rifle that has now become the kind of rifle where you ask yourself, should you pick it up? It's now like, if you're not confident with it, don't pick it up. If you are confident with it, go ahead and pick it up. It still has a faster TTK than the BR, AR, and even the Bandit rifle, albeit not by much. So what's the solution I would have done if I was in charge of buffing the Commando? I would increase its body shot damage from 13 down to 10 shots required for body shot kills. That's it. Why is this my solution, you may ask? To me, it's simple. Since the Commando, well, had a faster TTK, which I considered, unlike 343, this buffs the Commando for both sides of the community. Let me explain. For the casuals, the Commando is buffed for them because the body shot count is 3 shots less, meaning casuals don't have to land as many shots to the body. The Commando is also buffed for the competitive community because the Commando would have still retained its insane difficulty when it comes to aiming, and keep in mind, this gun also has recoil and bloom on top of its unforgiving reticle friction. This would have actually given more incentive for the whole community to get better with the rifle due to its fast TTK, which is the reward, but is balanced by its difficulty of landing shots. But, way too late for that, I guess. Just like 343 adding and fixing things later rather than having a strong content complete and functioning game at launch. And that is my long rant on this game and why I don't enjoy it as much as MCC. And you know what's the one thing I didn't mention going over everything I talked about in this video? I still didn't mention the horrendous netcode this game has which negatively affects everything I went over in this video. So to sum up on everything and give solutions on the topics I went over, I like the direction 343 went when it comes to buffing the movement acceleration. The problem is that it's overtuned. 
and it should have been toned down by 10 to even 20%. The assault rifle needs its headshot damage nerf from 15 shots up to 18 shots required to the head. The sidekick needs a slight red reticle range increase and an increase to its body shot damage from 10 down to 9 shots required to the body. The battle rifle needs its scope range decrease from 2.5 zoom down to a 2 times zoom. And for the commando, well, the idea I have is kind of wild and it involves adjusting the stalker rifle as well. That's another thing. My idea for the commando involves adjusting the other precision rifles in the game, so I'm just not going to mention it. And that's it. Obviously I could sit here and give my opinion on every weapon in this game, but that'll take forever. I also want to say that even though I gave this game a lot of shit that I've been holding back for a while now, I still do plan to make some sandbox analysis I have pre-planned in my head. And for those that watched my last Halo Reach weapon analysis video, if you watched till the very end, you'll know what's coming next. I also want to thank you guys for the last two videos I did, where I just sat down and talked about Halo. I didn't think many would give a shit on what I think, but hey, I guess you guys like to hear me ramble about Halo, so thank you. I didn't have to make this video, you know. I could have just moved on and made something else, because I'm having way more fun playing other games, and every time I come back to this game, it's depressing, and I'd rather play something else. But I felt like I had to make this video because I feel like nobody's talking about this stuff. Everyone is talking about how expensive the store is. I know, it's a ripoff right now. This latest update, CU29, it's terrible. New map is cool, but all the content is locked behind a paywall. Cross core shoulders are good, but if you stop and think to yourself, that's actually really fucking sad, like, to be excited about. That is so low. It's like Halo fans are just so desperate and praise any little W they can get, even if it's small. Alright, I think I'm done. Uh, I'm not sure how this video is going to do. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you enjoy my shit, and uh, maybe share the video around. And until next time, peace.